said to Mr. Hitler, if you think we're on the run, we are the boys who will stop your little game. We are the boys who will make you think again. Cause who do you think you are kidding, Mr. We must recreate the European family in a regional structure called, it may be, the United States of Europe. The what is but a movement of people. It must be all for all. Europe can only be united by the heartfelt wish and vehement expression of the great majority of all the peoples in all the parties in all the freedom-loving countries, no matter where they dwell or how they vote. We cannot aim at anything less than the Union of Europe as a whole. And Beethoven's Ninth, the European National Anthem, welcoming us back, or welcoming you back to this referendum results program. We've had more results since we uh, have come on the air. You see yes is now showing at 67% and the no vote at 33%. Let's just have a look at those counties and areas which have declared uh, while we were off the air. First of all, Clwyd in Wales, uh, that's part of the old Flintshire, Denbyshire, Merionethshire. Yes, 69%, no, 31% on a turnout of 66%. That's Clwyd in Wales, sandwiched between Cheshire and North West Wales. David? Well, that is all of Wales then we have in Mopo. We have David there, South West Wales. This is the old Pembrokeshire, Carmarthenshire, Cardiganshire. Yes, 68%. No, 32%. That's the bottom left-hand corner of Wales. And then we have Lothian in Scotland, Edinburgh, and the area around Edinburgh stretching east towards the Lammermoors. Moors. Yes, 59%. No, 41%. On a turnout of 64%. Area where John Mack 32 yeses. 683,789 683, noes. A lead of 772,343 for the yeses. And leaving out Scotland, where there's only 60% yes, all the other areas are extraordinarily uniform. 72% yes in the north, 71% yes in the Midlands, 70% yes in the south, 69% yes in Wales. I mean, all around 70%, more than two to one. Good evening and welcome at the end of this momentous day, when each one of us has had the chance to say what kind of country we want to live in. And we'll have the answer to the question that's haunted British politics for so long. Do we want to be in or out of the EU? Such passion, splitting families, dividing friends, for this is a vote with a difference. No constituencies, no first past the post. Every vote will count as equal as this country defines itself. Now, when Big Ben strikes 10 in a general election, of course, we release our exit poll to give the first indication of who's won. For the referendum, it's not going to be possible. Exit polls work if they do by comparing one election with another and measuring the change. It'd be crazy to compare this European referendum with the one that was held 41 years ago. It wouldn't work. So patience is our watchword tonight as we wait for the first actual declarations to come through. So Big Ben has struck 10 o'clock, and we can now start trying to discover which side thinks has carried the day on the basis of the results that come in. It's also a really serious moment. It's not a time, I think, for shouting and um, 
jumping up and down in that way, I think it's really important that we recognise this is a really big decision, something you, really you, momentous. Yes. Looks like it might be about to happen. With more than half the votes counted in the UK's referendum on the EU, it's looking increasingly possible that the Leave camp has built up a clear lead. The overall result is still too close to call, but Leave has better than expected results in vast areas of the country. Remain has had good results in London, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Here's our political correspondent, Ellen Garnier, and her report contains some flash photography. Moments after polls closed and in Sunderland, the traditional race to be the first to complete their count. And it wasn't long before Leave marked a huge win here with 61%. Ladies and gentlemen. Across the northeast, results soon showed Leave doing consistently better than predicted. It would have been better had the Prime Minister remained above the fray uh, through the campaign. Uh, he chose not to, but it was very clear throughout that whatever the outcome, uh, he would remain Prime Minister. Just go quickly down to Schroeder's and join Simon Jack, who has news about the start of trading. Simon, yes, you can wave to us and we can hear and see you. What's the news? Hi. Jolly, David, thanks. Yes, um, well, you can talk about the conjecture of the future. What's happening here and now is the FTSE 100. The stock market opened a few moments ago. It's down 500 points already. That's 8.5%. Hardly surprising after the record fall in st sterling we saw overnight. Uh, we join Laura Quinsberg, who's, uh, again, outside number 10, and we're waiting for the Prime Minister to come. There's the stand just being put in place, meaning he's about to come out. There Laura. That's right, David. The podium has just been put out, and I have to say this is not confirmed by any stretch, but there's a rumour going round this street that actually, when David Cameron comes out, he may be going to resign as Prime Minister after six years in office. Now, I must stress that is not by any stretch a confirmation at all. Senior Tories have said privately and publicly that actually they do not believe that he has to go. But it sounds as if he has made that personal calculation that actually it might be the right thing for him to do that. But this must He's be a, a devastating a blow to him, isn't it, personally? It's a devastating blow to our country. I'm voting out because I want these immigrants out. But I think we have unleashed something. And they voted in the face of the fact that they've probably never even seen a migrant. But it's the fault of politicians. <laughs> In a giant democratic exercise, perhaps the biggest in our history, over 33 million people from England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and Gibraltar have all had their say. We should be proud of the fact that in these islands we trust the people with these big decisions. We not only have a parliamentary democracy, but on questions about the arrangements for how we're governed, there are times when it is right to ask the people themselves, and that is what we have done. The British people have voted to leave the European Union, and their will must be respected. The will of the British people is an instruction that must be delivered. We must now prepare for a negotiation with the European Union. This will need to involve the full engagement of the Scottish, Welsh and Northern Ireland governments to ensure that the interests of all parts of our United Kingdom are protected and advanced. But above all, this will require strong, determined and committed leadership. I'm very proud and very honoured to have been Prime Minister of this country for six years. I fought this campaign in the only way I know how, which is to say directly and passionately what I think and feel, head, heart and soul. I held nothing back. I was absolutely clear about my belief that Britain is stronger, safer and better off inside the European Union. And I made clear the referendum was about this and this alone, not the future of any single politician, including myself. But the British people have made a very clear decision to take a different path. And as such, I think the country requires fresh leadership to take it in this direction. I will do everything I can as Prime Minister to steady the ship over the coming weeks and months, but I do not think it would be right for me to try to be the captain that steers our country to its next destination. This is not a decision I've taken lightly, but I do believe it's in the national interest to have a period of stability and then the new leadership required. There is no need for a precise timetable today, but in my view, we should aim to have a new Prime Minister in place 
by the start of the Conservative Party conference in October. Now the decision has been made to leave, we need to find the best way. And I will do everything I can to help. I love this country and I feel honoured to have served it. Politics from business because I believed that this nation should be self-governing. I have never been, and I have never wanted to be, a career politician. My aim in being in politics was to get Britain out of the European Union. That is what we voted for in that referendum two weeks ago. And that is why I now feel that I've done my bit, that I couldn't possibly achieve more than, than, than we managed to get in that referendum. And so I feel it's right that I should now stand aside as leader of UK. Of the UK Independence Party, Diane James. James has resigned as leader of UKIP just 18 days after she won a landslide victory in the race to succeed Nigel Farage. Institutional crisis of a scale that has never existed in my life. And the real trauma is that every day that goes past in the boardrooms of the world and of course this country, decisions are being delayed and they will go on being delayed until there is a clarity about Britain's economic future. And I'm appalled at the idea that we're going to take months to get to a position where we can decide how to proceed and then years before we come to a conclusion. And the damage that will do in terms of lost investment and avoided decisions And I think it's the worst time since Suez, though maybe even worse than that, because Suez was the end of an era, it was the end of our colonial um, aspirations. Had the knees cut from under us, the legs cut from under us by the Americans. Um, this was Europe, the European Union was our replacement for that colonial um, uh, role. And thanks to the calamitous errors of two Conservative Prime Ministers in a row, who thought that they could manage the unmanageable um, English nationalist right wing of the Conservative Party. Um, were Thank <laughs> you. 